I'm Jesus, and this is a follow-up video on the Hydra case. Now, I'm going to look at what's been happening with the price since it was discontinued, discuss what the future outlook for it is, and look at which skins in the case might be good to invest in. So, to begin with, where are we at since the case was discontinued? So, we can look at the price over the last month and follow the trend, and what we can see is the initially the price was in equilibrium about midway through November, and we can see that it crashed during the winter sale, not, not too badly, although it seemed bigger at the time, and then it rebounded for the rest of the sale to its previous equilibrium price. Now, at this point, the supply of the case had been run down quite a bit by the sale, and because it had been temporarily exhausted, there was a major price spike following the sale. Now, part of this was probably investment hype as well, and this eventually died off from the price normalised, declining to about 80 cents, and it ended up stabilising at around 90 cents, which is a new equilibrium at the moment. So, first things first, the major takeaway from this is that if you're going to invest in these, a good time to do it is when the price collapses during a sale. So, I mean, there's one coming up a day or two after this video comes out, there's the Steam sticker sales coming, sorry, the major sticker sales coming up, and they're often a good time to invest because that normally causes a price collapse as well. So it's probably best to invest around then because you'll get the cases for less and there'll probably be a price spike afterwards. You can get a really good return really quickly. Now, during the winter sale, I got a return of, I think, about 300% because I bought 400 cases at their lowest point during the sale and then they proceeded to triple in price. I don't think it will be quite as dramatic in the future, but I think there still should be a good chance to profit. You, you might not see 300%, but you might see 50%. And if you can get a 50% return over a week or two, that's a really good return. That's definitely worthwhile doing. Second thing, what is the long run outlook looking like beyond this sort of short run trend of sort of peaks and troughs? Well, first of all, it's worth noticing that the price of this case is generally being dictated by supply on the market. And it's important to note that this has always been very limited. Now, currently there's about 12,500 cases on the market. That was about half of what it was when it was discontinued. And the price trend reflects this. As you, if you look at the collection of averages from CS Grow, it's been going upwards in response to this. And if we look at the longer term stats, there's only ever been 4.5 million units sold. Compare this to the Huntsman case, there's been 26 million Huntsman cases sold. So, unsurprisingly, the Hydra case is now worth about 50% more than the Huntsman case. What's actually going on here is closer to the Bravo case. There's only 3 million Bravo cases ever sold. Now, I should stress the Hydra case is never going to get to $10 like the Bravo case, but this does indicate that we're going to be looking at a long-term price trend more close to these older cases rather than something like the Winter Offensive case or the Huntsman case, just because there's so few Hydra cases available. Now, if you haven't invested at this point, I don't think it's too late. There's a sale coming up. I'd recommend buying up then. I think you'd get a really good return even sitting in the immediate couple of weeks. Um, that, that guarantee isn't carved in stone. It's just my opinion. Pick it out for yourself. But I still think it's worthwhile investing. But I'd try and time it during a sale when the price of the crate drops just to try and increase the amount of money you make. Now... Quick little thing on the side, there's some weird shit going on with key sales for the Hydra case. As you can see, there's more, way more Hydra keys being sold on OP skins than any other type of skin. In fact, there's more Hydra case keys being sold than there are Hydra cases being sold on the Steam market. So, as for why this is happening, now I am just speculating here, but I think what's happened is because less Hydra cases are being opened, there's become a glut of keys on the market, and that's in turn made its price slightly cheaper than other keys. So when people go on OP skins to buy keys for stuff like, you know, trading sites and gambling sites and stuff like that. They just go and pick up the cheapest keys. So I think I think that's inflated the number of Hydra case keys being sold, which is a not particularly important thing on the side, but I think it's kind of an interesting novelty that a discontinued case that isn't selling at a high rate happens to be the most sold case key on OP skins. Now, this brings us to our second topic, which is investing in Hydra case skins. And the reason I think this is an interesting thing to look at can be seen by looking at the price trends on Bravo case skins since that case was discontinued. So if we look at the humble UMP bone pile, a tenfold increase at its peak. If we look at the M4 Zerka, its price went up about six times. If we look at the, the very sexy orb graphite, its price increased about sixfold. And if we look at the kind of dingy but very famous and highly desired Fire Serpent, it's seen about an eightfold increase. So, how relevant is this to the Hydra case? I think it's more relevant than it seems, and I'll explain why. So, 
it's easy to look at the Bravo case and think, well, since that case was discontinued, there was an exponential increase in the number of people playing the game, therefore the Hydra case can't act in the same way. But here's the thing, the reason the Bravo case went up in value so much isn't because there were more players, it's because the fact that there were more players meant that the number of cases became small relative to the player base. And we know the total number of Bravo cases that have been sold over the years, it's 3 million. And at the same time we know the number of Hydra cases that have been sold, it's only 50% more, it's 4.5 million. But though that 3 million and 4.5 million are directly comparable because they're they exist within the same player base, so the Hydra case is obviously not going to get a tenfold increase on anything, but there is there is some scope for comparison. I think there is good reason to think that there will be a price increase just because there's, what, 11 million unique players playing Counter-Strike, and there's only ever been 4.5 million Hydra cases sold. That's a really low number compared to any other case other than the, the Bravo case and maybe the 2013 eSports case and the original weapons case and stuff like that. However, taking this into account, we can look at the Bravo case and, and quite clearly see that these are going to have to be long-term investments. These price increases happened over a couple of years for the Bravo case, and they undoubtedly will with the Hydra case as well. So these would be a medium-term investment at the very least. Uh, my guess would be maybe we'll see a two to three time, two to three-fold increase in, in prices over one to two years, uh, very broad margins of error leaves, I don't really know and I'm just speculating, but, and it may not be the, the most incredible return on the Steam market, but in many respects it's not a bad one either, first of all there's very little risk, the price isn't likely to crash, so it, it'd be a matter of just not making quite as much money as you're hoping, and in any case, even if you only make say, a 50% return after a year and a half, that's still a pretty good return. If you've got plenty of capital you can have sitting around in skins like that, there's no real reason to think that's a, a bad outcome. It might not be as amazing as some other things, but 50% return over a year and a half, the, try and find a place in real life where you get that. that that's, that's still pretty good. So this brings us on to what I'd actually recommend investing in. And to explain it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and depict the case as something of an ecosystem. So. Essentially, mil-spec skins are born, they're, they're created by people unboxing cases, and people trade them up for play skins, and in the case of the restricted skins, that's the, the AK Orbit, so people trade up mil-spec skins for the Orbit, and then there's a whole bunch of purple skins people don't want, people trade them up for M4A4 Hellfires, and then there's a whole bunch of classified skins people don't want, because you, know, you get a Copper Strike or a Sugar Rush sometimes, people try trading them up for Onitajis. So there's an upwards flow of value through the collection which determines the equilibrium prices, but at the same time it does include some leeway for profit between the different tiers of rarity to reward people who put the effort into finding the right skins to do a trade up because that, that can be time consuming, it's effectively sort of a, a margin for time invested finding the right skins. Now this model is undoubtedly too simplistic, but for this case I think it is close enough that we can get away with it because I think the price flows between this particular case are fairly straightforward and I don't think there's going to be too much stuff interfering, interfering with it. So as which skins are best to invest in, the model indicates that the prices should rise roughly equally across the collection. However, I would lean towards investing in the play skins and I'll explain why I think that. So essentially when you do a trade up, only certain skins are profitable when, when you're trying to do that trade up. For instance, there isn't really anything I could do with a, a sugar rush with a float of 0.416 for instance to make a profit if I'm, if I'm doing trade ups. Like, from my perspective, those are useless. I just resell them the second I get them or never buy them in the first place. Now, what this means is there should be sort of a, a build up of unusable skins within the sort of the the parts of the collection that he, he consumed in trade-ups as opposed to used as play skins. And what I expect is that that build-up of skins will, in, it, and at the same time, usable skins will become more rare. I think that combination of the skins that people want to use for trade-ups becoming more rare and unusable skins becoming more common will artificially keep the, 
the price down for skins that are used for trade-ups versus skins that are used as play skins. And in turn, with that, the margin for people doing trade-ups will increase because it's harder and harder to find useful skins to do trade-ups, and that increased margin will reflect the increase in price of the play skins. So that's basically why I'd recommend going for play skins. I think they will rise more in the future than skins that are primarily used for trade-ups. So as for the skins that I'm specifically recommending, first of all, I'd recommend the AK Orbit. I think this will continue to grow in price. It's a very desirable AK. It's got a strong price already for a purple skin. I think the demand for it will stay good. I think it's a good investment. Secondly, there is the M4 A4 Hellfire. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing anything more than a medium term investment with this because there's a lot of talk about the M4 A1S being buffed in the future and that might negatively affect the price of the Hellfire. So, I'm not saying don't invest in it, but be more careful with it. And for what it's worth, I am keeping a few of them on hand. But I wouldn't look at keeping them for the long haul. They may they may go out of fashion a little bit. And finally, we have the Onitaji, and it's obviously a grand investment because the Chinese are going to love it. They're going to buy heaps, pricing are going through the roof. It's going to be... I'm, I'm kidding. Now, who, people who tell you that this skin is going to go well because the Chinese don't know what they're talking about, nonetheless, though, I think it is still a good skin to invest in. It is... Commands a good price already, it's very good looking, I think it's going to keep going up. It's, it's just a good play piece, in my opinion. As for what not to invest in, the, the main skin I can't recommend is the 5.7 Hyper Beast. Now, I know if you look at it at face value, it looks like it's worth a similar amount to the Onitaji, but most of that value is in the factory new version, and that, that is because it has a very unforgiving float range. And if you if you compare the, the minimal wear... 5.7 Hyper Beast to the, the minimal wear on Itaji, you can see quite clearly that the, the 5.7 just isn't as in demand. And the other the other thing is it's basically junk from failed on Itaji trade-ups, the minimal wear 5.7. So if you, are, if you are still going to invest in it, make sure you go for the factory new because they're quite hard to get. The, I don't think the minimal wear is going to go up much because they're effectively a junk skin from failed trade-ups. But anyway, that's probably enough from me. I hope this video is helpful for people. Trust the numbers, not your gut. I'm Jesus. Thanks for watching. See ya.